actually carrying about three billion dollars worth of national assets, you know, here on our shoulders, you know, while we're going to the pad, it's it's pretty mind-boggling. But to me, the more incredible part about the crawler is when you do dock it up at the pad, the accuracy is down to a sixteenth of an inch that we can stop the crawler at. Uh, north, south, east, and west. Uh, so even though she may be a clumsy beast, she can really put it on a dime. We are uh, rolling about a mile an hour at this time. We have uh, about an hour and a half left to go to get to the top of the pad. And uh, Hans is running pretty good. I started calling him Hans and Franz after Beastie Boys, and that's where we got it from, was from a Saturday Night Live uh, uh, clip they used to have characters on it called Hans and Franz and they were here to pump you up and that's what we do When we developed the shuttle uh, we we used the old facilities that that had been created for Apollo and adapted them for shuttle it's very much a cobbling together of budget driven design compromises that we see it was a learning process of old technology and new technology put together to try to define and place how we can go on from here to do it more efficiently. There's something like 30,000 people involved in getting a shuttle ready for launch and launching it. That's no way to make it cheap. The idea that we could have done that somehow for $10 million a throw just uh, boggles the mind when you see what actually happens. NASA was given a very difficult job, and technically NASA performed. The shuttle is too expensive to operate. We've got to find much faster, cheaper ways of doing it. As the time for launch approaches, things get more critical. My mind is reviewing all the things that could be trouble spots. Did we cover everything adequately? Did we check everything? Did we watch everything? Are we really ready? The bottom line is we cannot afford another Challenger accident. Okay, we've got a main engine flash in the plume of main engine number one. Do you notice any kind of contaminant in the exhaust plume that would cause that? I didn't see anything obvious, however, I wonder if it's related to that uh, event we saw just prior to this. And so if it means checking something another time, another 10 times, another 100 times to make sure it's going to operate properly and not jeopardize the crew or the vehicle, we will do that. The film analysis is like a detective story. We use different formats to piece together the event. For example, a small leak should it occur or a piece of hardware falling off the shuttle. A wide angle view gives us more time to plot a trajectory, to watch the, the rotation and characteristics of that piece falling away from the vehicle. We have approximately 80 of these type cameras positioned around the launch pad. They are designed to look at the vehicle from every possible angle so that we can ascertain the condition of the vehicle during the hazardous fueling operation. After the fueling is complete, we come out here with a team called the ICE team. only got two hours to look at every square inch on this vehicle and, and pronounce it ready for launch. We are well aware that there's over two million pounds of solid rocket fuel in the boosters and over 500,000 gallons of cryogenic fuel in the external tanks. So it is a hazardous operation. There is potential for major problems there should anything ever occur. So all the team members are volunteers. actually strikes me as a living, breathing entity. It, it makes 
sound. There is the hissing of purge gases escaping, the popping of valves opening and closing, the rumble of the burn stack as we burn off the excess hydrogen. And so you get this impression that it is ready to go and it's, it's catching its breath, waiting to jump off the pad. My name is Al Sofji. I'm the uh, shuttle test director at uh, Kennedy Space Center. And my prime function is to lead the launch team on, on during the launch countdown process, which starts three and a half days before the actual liftoff. The final hours of launch start approximately eight to 10 hours before launch. And we come in, we check the weather, make sure we have good weather. We check with all of our systems and all of our our support areas around the world and make sure that, that no one has a problem that would prevent us from tanking or launching. When you get ready to launch the shuttle from uh, the Kennedy Space Center, you have several emergency landing fields on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, six time zones away. And so if it gets too late in Florida, that means it's already, particularly in the winter, dark uh, in Spain or on the coast of Africa. And so you can cancel a launch because your emergency landing uh, sites are in darkness. There is no actual button that someone pushes. We have uh, what we call a ground launch sequencer, which is uh, effectively a computer program that takes us down through the last minutes of launch. Um, it can stop itself if it detects a problem, or anyone in the firing room can request a hold if they see a problem. Well, I'm Bob Seek. I'm the launch director for the space shuttle. My responsibility is to make sure that, that we don't get launch fever, uh, we don't get carried away in this pyramid of, of reaching the final go for launch. Everyone is polled where they have to indicate that they are really go to proceed. NASA test director, this is ICE team, channel 232. We're complete on the FSS 215-foot level. Everything looks fine. If I'm comfortable that there's nothing out there that's bugging anybody, then it's fairly easy to give the go-ahead to launch. 